Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Conceptual Physics. This is the first lesson of the second nine weeks. It's real great to be uh, done with that first nine weeks. I can't believe how fast it went. Maybe it isn't so great. Time flies the way it is. But not only time flies, you know what else flies? Do you? What else flies is balls. So that's what today's topic of discussion is, is the soccer punch in two dimension. So really what we're studying here is called projectile motion. So you better make sure you know that. But this time, and we've, we have done projectile motion, but we've only really talked about it in one dimension. So this time it's two dimensions. So what we've done in projectile motion is we've studied what happens if you kick a ball like straight up or straight down or something like that. And we even did a couple cliff problems which is actually two-dimensional motion. But we're really going to you know, focus in on this projectile motion. So we've done the soccer punt, right? And what we did before is, well, we kicked the ball, and it looked kind of like this, the path. And what we did is we tried to figure out how high this thing would go before, right? And when we did that, we used half the time because we knew that it took half the time of the kick to get to the top, then half the time of the kick to get to the bottom. So we're going to do, we're going to work with that again. Keep in mind we've been studying vectors. And so if you look at the vector of this kick, once that ball leaves the foot, it's going to have. A velocity and it's just one velocity but one thing that we are, we've been talking about in the last the last couple of weeks is this thing that we can have a horizontal component of velocity and also a vertical component of velocity so we've been talking about that and we've been talking about the fact that these are at right angles to each other so if we get, you know, our horizontal and our vertical, if we know what those are, we can ultimately find out then what our resultant is. And so the resultant is the addition of the vector components. And we're looking at this velocity of a kick. So really what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out uh, when you guys go outside on Wednesday and you do your lab, uh, when you kick this ball, with just figuring out a couple things, you're going to be able to figure out how the velocity of your kick, at least the magnitude of it, the direction we might not worry about too much. Okay, so this is what's going to happen out there. We can't ever find the velocity by itself, but we can find the x part of the velocity and the y part of the velocity, and then do some math to figure out what the, the actual velocity is. So it's a two-step process. Okay, so what we're going to do is I erase that so I can draw a new one here so we can do the math a little bit easier. So here's the ball. Here's the, the motion of the kick. Okay. Um, the first thing that we're wanting, going to want to do is we have to is know what we have to do or know what kind of information we need to solve this. And the first thing that we want to find is the time of the entire kick. So the time for the full kick, that's, we're going to have to take that data with our phones or whatever we have out there to time these kicks. Okay, that's number one. And then the other thing is the distance of the kick. So the horizontal distance of the kick. You know, it's probably better to say displacement, but we can say distance. So what that means is, if I kick this ball, start the stopwatch, when it hits the ground, let's just say that I have a time of 10 seconds. That's a pretty big kick, OK? And then we want to make sure that we take our tape measure outside so we can measure 
how far it is from where the ball got kicked to where it lands. And for this, we're just going to say 30 meters. That's a pretty far kick, too. So our horizontal displacement is 30 meters. Our time is 10 seconds, okay? So that's the data you're going to be getting when you go out and do this lap. Okay, so we went out there, we kicked it. I'm going to put our time up here. This is the full time is 10 seconds. That's all the way up and all the way down, right, for the kick. And the full distance is 30 meters. So I'm writing this down up here, this picture, so you know where to find it. You keep this on your notes, but I'm going to erase it off of this board. Okay, so I just want to make sure that we, we remember what our formulas are. Okay, so we have V equals V subscript naught. So that's final V, initial V, plus AT. We have X equals V sub naught T plus one half AT squared. And then we also have V squared is equal to V subscript naught squared plus two AX. And that's acceleration times displacement. Okay, so this is these are this is really the only toolbox we have right now. So the first thing we want to figure out, because in order to find our actual velocity, we need to find our horizontal velocity and our vertical. So I'm going to show you how to find the horizontal velocity. Okay, so everyone pay attention, write this down as notes. Here it is. And really it's this part of the, this equation. The acceleration, remember, in the horizontal is zero. So this formula worked around is this. Velocity in the x direction is equal to the distance in the x direction divided by the total time. So you can go ahead and start with this formula. You don't have to start with this one if you want, but it is the same formula. Okay, so for this situation, the velocity in the x direction is how far? The horizontal distance from where I kicked it to where it landed is 30 meters. And then the time for it to go that far is 10 seconds. Okay. So any questions about where I got these numbers from? You're going to have to do this, you know, on a quiz, but you're also going to have to do this in a lab on Wednesday. So the velocity in the x direction then is 3 meters per second. Okay. So now I want to take that and put that over here in my little triangle. So it's three meters per second is the velocity in the x direction. Okay. So now we want to figure out the velocity in the y direction. And we've done this too. We've done both of these things so far this year. But the velocity in the y direction is going to be the one that accelerates, right? So this acceleration it's something that happens in the y direction on the way up. The acceleration slows the velocity down. On the way down, it speeds it up, right? So do you remember what we did to figure out how high our kick went earlier? How much time did we use? Did we use the full time, or what did we do? OK, so you know we could use the full time for the kick to find this velocity in the y direction. But I'll show you the way that I like to do it. Especially, it, you know, this only works if it starts and stops in the same place. So remember, our kick is like this, right? Half the time up, half the time down. We have something special up here, right? The velocity in the y direction at the top is what, you guys? Always. Okay, yeah, so just keep in mind that the velocity in the y direction at the top is zero, right? Because it goes, the ball goes up, stops, comes back down. Now, there's going to be a velocity in the x direction, but we can't mix those two together. That velocity in the x direction is constant the whole time. It's the y velocity that changes. So all the way up, it's getting less and less and less. 
it stops right up here, which is that special spot right there. And then it comes down and gets more and more and more as far as speed. So knowing that, we're going to take advantage of that and make the math a step easier. We're going to you know, keep in mind that the velocity in the Y at the top is zero. And we're going to use that to make our math a little bit easier. Okay. So before we do that, though, we got to take half the time because that, that half the time is what gets us to the top. Okay. So I'm just going to jot down five seconds so I remember I'm only using half the time. Okay. So there's a couple there's a couple different ways to do this, but I'm going to use this formula right here. Okay, so I'm going to start out. My final velocity is equal to my initial velocity plus my acceleration times time. So I'm talking about my y velocities, right? That's why there's this acceleration in here. Keep in mind the acceleration is negative 10. But if I kick the ball up, I have an initial y velocity here. When it gets to the top, if that's when I'm stopping it, which I'm stopping my question at that time, that's why I'm only using five seconds, my final velocity is zero. So this is how the formula, or how I fill in these numbers here. This is the one I'm looking for. And my acceleration is negative 10. And my time is 5 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to subtract this from both sides. So I have a negative V sub naught is going to be equal to negative 50. Because 10 times 5 is 50, right? Now the only thing I have to do is divide both sides by negative 1. Oops, I'm not sure what that is. So I can see now that my v sub naught in the y direction is equal to 50 meters per second, which is incredibly fast. I don't think anyone can kick it that fast. Okay, do you have any questions about how that math goes? Now, since this isn't strictly a math class, I'll show you that there could be a little bit easier way to do this since we've seen, um, you know, we've seen the algebra here, which is important, but we're mostly concerned about the physics. So I'll just show you that you could write this formula as V sub naught is equal to um, negative AT. And the only reason why I put that negative there is because a is little g is negative 10. So if you if you if you want to just shorten some steps here, you can use this v sub naught in the y direction. That is, is equal to negative a t, and in this case it's g. So if we use that, then we'd say well a negative times a negative 10 times five seconds gives us that 50 meters per second. So you can do that if you want to. But it does come out of this formula. Okay, so now you have two pieces of, of your triangle. You have your X piece, and now your Y piece is 50 meters per second. Almost done. Okay, so this is a right triangle. Oops, I don't know where that went. Um, but this is a right triangle, which means we have a formula that we can use to help us solve for this side. So do you guys remember any formula that you can use to solve for the hypotenuse um, when you have two legs? What's the formula? Oh, because I couldn't hear. Um, I'm not sure what you said because of the mass, but it looks like this. A squared plus B squared equals c squared. Very good. Okay, so you do know this formula. So now we get to use it. So remember, a and b, it doesn't matter what you call a and b as long as you don't call it the long side. The only one that you have to make sure of is the c squared. It's the long side, or the hypotenuse is what we call the triangle, right? So I'm going to just put a as 3 here. Okay, so 3 squared plus, and I got 50 here, 50 squared equals C squared. 
Okay, so this is kind of a bad example because it's going to be so close to 50 because 50 squared is so much bigger than 3 squared. But still, this is the way that you do it, okay? So then 9 plus, what's 50 squared you got? Is 2,500? Okay. Equals C squared. So then you have to take the square root of both sides, right? But see what I mean how close this is going to be to 50 anyway? Because it's just 9 more. So it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of a bad example, but it's about the form right now. So put that in your calculator. 2509 divided, or the square root of 2509 is? Okay, okay so it's 50.089. Is that what you said? 50 point. Yeah, so thanks, Cole. So 50.089 then is your final answer. for your velocity of your kick on this. Okay, so hopefully this is enough for you, enough of an example for you to follow. I'm gonna have um, multiple problems for you to do in quiz form this week. And so you got this PowerPoint to study, and then you got your quiz to do, and then we have a lab, and that'll be a wrap for the week. Okay, hopefully you guys enjoy this video, and hopefully you learned something. Have fun with your quiz.